Okay, here's our lesson in here's our lesson in how to lock up in the small locks. The lock gates are. Oh. I'll turn that radio down. It's very rude. Oh, I'll turn this radio down too. Very rude. Very rude people. Anyway, the lock gates close behind you. That's uh, important. And they don't sometimes. If you look, there's a little crack of daylight showing until the pressure of the water forces them together a little bit tighter. But, I mean, the valves that they can open are so large that the amount of water you would lose through that crack is pretty minuscule anyway, in comparison. And then the lock walls in here uh, float up and down with you. So you might notice them floating up and down. So you don't need to adjust the lengths of your uh, mooring lines as you go through here. Anyway, you uh, sit here comfortably uh, in your wheelhouse with the heat running and everything until you get all the way up and then they open the other gates on the other end and then you go out and you go home. We just came back up from dropping the barge off. There's the barge. Looks like the crane is doing something, swinging around to, swinging around to grab something it looks like. I don't know what they're gonna grab, but it must be something good. Normally, on a in the summer, there'd be about 700 people here watching us lock through and taking pictures, and trying to figure out how this all works. But uh, on a Monday morning in late January, there's nobody around except a couple people going to work. This is a this is a good way to get across the canal because uh, the next closest crossing is the Ballard Bridge way down there, which you might be able to see. And of course, that's a ways out of your way if you're, you know, if you live, you know, if you live right over there, let's say, in Magnolia someplace, and you want to go to Ballard, and you can't drive across here, but that's okay. It's uh, it's a good pedestrian crossing. You have to walk your bicycle across, but uh, that's that's good. This guy, look at this guy here. He's walking his bicycle across. Where did he go? Oh, there he is, walking walking his bicycle. But um, anyway, yeah. So there's the large lock next to us. You can see it over there. It's about oh, I want to say it's 600 by 85 or something, something along those lines. This lock is about 100 and. Oh, that's so rude when the radio does that. So very rude. Anyway, this lock is, I want to say, 125 maybe by uh, 28. I think it used to be 30, but these uh, these floating guide walls were an afterthought. They put those in later, I believe, and that necked it down a little bit. But it also made it a lot easier for recreational boats who aren't as, you know, they're not as savvy on how to do this and don't have as many people necessarily and they're not covered with rubber like us look at us you got airplane tires all over the place you can't really go wrong with airplane tires airplane tires are the best to use for fendering because they don't have any steel belting in them except right in the bead there's no belt uh, steel in the tread or anything so you can drill holes in them and, and whatnot a lot more easily than with a truck tire plus they're a little wider they're a little wider side to side for a given size tire, a given diameter, so that helps. Oh, here come the gates opening up. The gates are opening, which means I'm going to have to go to work in a second. So that's the end of this video. Hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.